In the last two videos, we evaluated limits graphically. So we looked at a picture to find the value of a limit. And in this video, we're going to look at calculating a limit numerically. And you've had some experience with this when we were looking at slopes of secant lines and average velocities. And so the first one we're going to look at here is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. And so the first thing I'd like you to do is to, let's plug this in our calculator and look at a graph. We'll go to our y equals and we'll clear anything out that's in there. I also, um, we're going to do y equals sine x, so sine x, close the parentheses, divided by x. I also want to make sure that I'm in radian mode, um, and most of the time we're going to be in radian mode in calculus because the radians are real numbers. When we work with triangles, we will will change to degree mode. But we're in radian mode for now. I'm going to quit out of here, and in order to graph that, I'm going to do a zoom trig, which is a zoom 7. So you can either arrow down to 7, Oops, it went a little too far. This is a little different on the computer. Um, and hit enter. Or you can just hit zoom 7. And so here is the graph of sine x over x. And when I look at the picture, it does appear that as I approach 0 from the left and from the right, that the limit is 1. I, I want to show you something. Um, well, one thing is when you look at the domain. And think about the domain of sine x over x, we know that x cannot equal 0. So we know x is not in our domain. It's hard to see on this graph that there is no function value at 0, but when you hit trace and 0, which is already there, and you hit enter, you'll see that there's a blank. There's nothing in there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to close the, this for a second, and I'm going to choose some values. If I want to approach 0 from the left, Let's say I put 0 right in the middle. If I want to approach 0 from the left, I'm thinking I might start with, say, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, excuse me, from the right, <laughs> approaching from the right, and 0 0.001. I'm getting values that are positive, but getting smaller and smaller and closer to 0. If I want to approach 0 from the right, excuse me, from the left, I'm going to use negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001. And so what I can use a calculator, the, the table feature on the calculator to do this. We'll go to second window to set up my table. It's on ask and auto, which I want it to be. We'll go to second graph, and there are some values there from a problem from before, so I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to start by approaching from the right. So I've got point 0.1. Point 0.01. 0.001 and it looks like we're approaching 1 and I, I'm going to arrow and highlight over that so you can see that we're at 0.99999 so let's just write down five decimal places for each of these so I've written these values in my table and then we'll evaluate the left-hand limits approaching from the left-hand side. So I'll get back into the first column, arrowing over negative 0.1, negative 0.01, and negative 0.001. And again, I'm going to go up because this rounds to the nearest fifth decimal place. So I'm going to put my cursor and highlight the one so I can see all the decimal places. And so I'm going to write these three values in my table. So 
So as I approach zero from the right, I can see that I'm a, my y values or my function values approaching one. And as I approach zero from the left using these negative numbers, I can see that my y values are approaching one. And so we would say that the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is equal to one. Later in this class, we'll actually prove that this is true. Um, but for now, when you use a table, you're really just approximating. You're not proving anything, but you're using the, the data to see the trend. And the trend is telling us that the limit as x approaches zero uh, seems to be one. Now let's look at the next problem. We're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches one of the square root of x minus one over x minus one. The first thing we want to do is we want to put this function in our calculator. I've cleared out my other functions. I'm going to need parentheses for the numerator, so I have open parentheses and then second x squared gives me square root of x. I'm going to hit the right arrow once to get the cursor from out from underneath the square root. I'm going to press minus one. I'm going to close my parentheses. Then I'm going to divide that. Open parentheses, x minus one, close them. And I'm just going to do a zoom six, which is a standard window. And I'm going to be approaching one. What I'd like to do is zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to trace on zero, hit enter, and then I'm going to zoom in. So hit zoom, and if you arrow down once and hit enter, you need to hit enter again, and you can zoom in. Alright, and so I'm looking, now if I trace on one, just like in the last problem, and hit enter, I don't get a value because there's actually, there's a hole in it. Uh, one is not in the, in the domain of this function. So I want to look and see what values the function approaches as x approaches one. So we're going to use a table feature again. What I'd like you to do this time is I'd like you to figure out if we're going to approach one from both sides, um, again, it doesn't matter which side you put the left and right on, but I, say I approach one from the left, I can approach one from the right. I would like you to pick three values to the left of one that are close to one and three values to the right and evaluate those and then start up the video again and see if your answer is similar to mine. All right, so my three values, if I'm approaching from the left of one, I'm going to use 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. I'll check those. If I want to approach from the right, I'm going to be at 1.1, 1 1.01, 1.001. We can always add more if we need it, if we feel like we're not showing a trend. I'm going to pull up my calculator, go to second table. I'm going to delete the values that were there from the last problem and start putting in these values. So 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0.999. So as we look, it appears, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write these three values in the table. And before I wrote my values in the table, I put the highlighter over them so that I could get more decimal values. And I just rounded out to five. So I'll put the next three values in the calculator and do the same. 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 
it appears here to me that as as x approaches 1, the y values are approaching a half. So we would say the limit as x approaches 1 of the square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to a half. And in the next section, we're going to prove this analytically also. The last one is just the limit as x approaches 5 of 6x minus 1. I'd like you to evaluate this one. So as x approaches 5, choose values to the left of 5 that, that approach 5 and choose values to the right of 5 that approach 5. I'd like you to pause the video, evaluate the individual limits, and then make a conjecture as to what the actual limit of this function is as x approaches 5. Okay, the values that I would choose coming from the left are 4.9, 4.99, 4 The right, I'd choose 5.1, 5.01, 5.001. So I've gone ahead um, and typed in 6x minus 1 in my calculator. I've cleared out my table. I'm going to start plugging in my function values. So for my, excuse me, my x values. So 4.9, 4.99, 4.99, 4.001, 4.001. And I'll go in and add the x values to the right of 5, so 5.1, 5.01, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001, 5.001